We continue our trip down the east coast, starting this week in Yapoon. We spend a few days in Yapoon and also get to go over to Great Keppel Island for the day. We then go inland and spend a few days in Rockhampton before finishing the week down in Gladstone. Well guys, we're in Yapoon. Yes, very exciting. And we are now at the Keppel Bay Marina. Yeah, exactly. So uh, today, uh, for our first day in Yapoon, uh, we're gonna head out to the Great Keppel Island. Um, and it's really reasonable. I think it's $25 each uh, return or a little bit less if you book a round trip. Uh, and dogs are free as well. So we can take Archie with us. So yeah, that's awesome. Really exciting. Now, Chris, Chris is hiding something. He has a confession to make. This is actually our second day in Yapoon, but <laughs> yesterday was Bathurst. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, I watched all seven hours of Bathurst, yes. Yeah, so I popped to the visitor center, grabbed a fridge magnet, popped to the supermarket, did a couple of things and Chris enjoyed, reveled in yes. one of his favorite pastimes, which is watching Bathurst. Yes, that's right. But. Uh, but yeah, we can't sit inside for too long because no. the weather's pretty good. It was, it's been a bit hit and miss uh, here in Yapoon so far. We've had some unbelievable downpours. Um, yeah. But it the sun usually comes out pretty soon after. Yeah, it tends to happen at about four or, four or five o'clock in the morning though. Mm. So by the time you're getting up, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's right. So it's still a bit cloudy at the moment. So hopefully it clears up a little bit. Um, and we're going to head over to the island. It's about a half mm -hmm. an hour trip to the island. Uh, and we come back at about four o'clock. I think we're gonna do some snorkeling and just lay about the beach and have a little bit of lunch and just play with Archie a bit. I might get yeah. Archie cam out for a little bit. I know you'll <laughs> love it. Um, and we'll see how we go, I reckon. Yeah, can't wait. All right, here we go. Chris is just filling out the form. We forgot our snorkels, so we're having to hire some. <laughs> it was early. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to uh, doing a bit of snorkeling. It was a pretty rough ride over. Yeah, Archie it was. was petrified. The yeah, board then, but, uh, Archie was trembling. Yeah, it was really rough to be yeah, fair. It was rough. Much rougher than I expected. So on Great Keppel Island, there are actually no roads around the island. So unfortunately, the only way to uh, get around to the other beaches is to one, either walk, which is what we're doing now, and it's very hot, but uh, we'll push through. Or the other option is uh, the water sports company here do uh, boat drop-offs as well, but they're pretty pricey. I think they're $50 one way, $80 return. Um, 
And so the beach we're going to at the moment, we're just walking there now, it's called Monkey Beach. And it's one of the better spots for snorkeling on Great Keppel Island. So looking forward to doing some snorkeling while we're here for sure. And uh, yeah, it's about, it's about a 45 minute walk from where the ferry drops you off. So it's uh, not, not a difficult walk, but in the humidity and the heat here, you know, the, the walk's quite rocky. And doing it with Archie as well makes it a little difficult because he wants to stop and smell everything. But uh, it's also pretty steep in places. But I think we're most of the way there now. We're, we're at the peak, so we're gonna start going downhill in a second. And then I think we'll set ourselves up in the shade somewhere, have some breakfast, and then uh, cool off with a nice swim slash snorkel at Monkey Beach. You found the way. Hey, you found the way. Well, Monkey Beach was a hit. Really, really nice little place. Um, the water was beautiful and turquoise, lovely and clear, really warm. The walk to it was pretty tough, but definitely worth it if you come into Great Keppel. Now the snorkeling, it was okay. There was loads and loads of fish, not a lot of color there. Uh, a lot of the coral was dead as well, mainly out on the reef. So the edges of the reef were really good and there was loads of fish. Uh, and that was amazing. There was these little silver kind of silvery bluey fish. There had to be millions and millions of them. I don't think I've ever seen so many. So that was really cool. But um, yes, yeah, not the best snorkeling I've ever had, but I think that also, oh, let me just crawl under here. That also might have to do with the time of day. We kind of went kind of mid tide or just before mid tide. So the water's actually really, really deep. So the, you kind of lose the color in that deepness. And also I can't really get down too far to see, see a lot of uh, the coral and the marine life closer to the reef. But um, I think if you go later on in the afternoon, it'd be perfect. But 
unfortunately, I think the best time to go snorkeling here is when we're back on the boat going back to uh, Yapoon, but never mind. So Hannah hasn't had a swim yet. I know, crazy. So we've just come to the main beach, the resort beach here, and uh, Archie's already in, and we're gonna probably chill out here for a bit and have another swim. Oh, it's a lovely temperature, isn't it, Archie? Yeah. Hey? Are you going to get in finally, Han? Yep. I don't, Maybe. I don't believe you. I just have to get changed into my posse. Oh. oh. Archie's in the sand. We've come down to Emu Park. It is not what I expected it to be at all. Yeah, it's very white. Lots of white statues, white buildings. Uh, yeah, it's really cool little quaint little town. Yeah, I was expecting it to be just kind of quite a an underdeveloped little fishing village mm. or something. It feels it's, almost resorty yes. in a strange way. So apparently at the turn of the 20th century, it was um, a bit of a, a seaside resort. So I think a lot of the architecture is based on that. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. So now we've come over to the singing ship. Um, so this is a tribute to Captain James Cook and um, it's, it's a sculpture that sings. So yeah. there are three um, flutes, the three sort of pipes, metal pipes, yeah. and then when the coastal breeze comes in, um, they sing, they each play a note. It's only really gentle breeze today. We can just barely, barely hear it. Yeah. Hear it kind of whistling in the background, but you probably won't be able to hear it, but we can definitely no. hear it very faintly. Unfortunately, the wind is louder than the uh, the notes, so yeah. I'm not sure that the camera will pick up on it. It also probably depends on which way the wind's coming as well. So, yeah. um, you know, we can occasionally hear it whistling, but yeah, not too loudly, but it's very cool. Yes, it's cool. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a bit more of a wander around Emu Park and then head up maybe Yapoon Way. Yeah, head up past Yapoon, see what we can find. We've come down the Memorial Walk, down to the Anzac Memorial. So this pictorial sculpture behind is based on a photo that was taken on the Western Front in Belgium uh, in the First World War in 1917. So it's um, for such a small town, it's a pretty impressive memorial. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Look what I found. <laughs> Let's have a go. <laughs> so while we're at Yapoon, we're staying at a little spot called Island View Caravan Park. It's just right between Emu Park and the marina at Yapoon, so not a bad location. Probably 10 minutes down the road from Emu Park and maybe 15 to 20 minutes from Yapoon, so really nice spot. Uh, there's a dog beach or a really nice beach just opposite us here as well, which you can use anytime, which is really good. Uh, and yeah, it's a really nice caravan park. It's actually probably one of my top five caravan parks we've been to on the trip. It's about $42 a night, which is uh, a little pricey when we're trying to find cheaper options, but you know, not too bad, especially when you get a place like this. And uh, these are the sites here. So we're set up here. Don't mind our washing, apologies. But uh, this is our site here. Really nice and flat, large site. We've got a concrete slab. Uh, we didn't have to level it. It was a breeze getting into, so that's always a plus. And uh, yeah, we sit right behind this little lake which is behind us you can see behind me so yeah that lake actually we've had we've had about 80 mils of rain since we've been here some torrential torrential rain in the morning uh, and the first day was 50 mils and I think yesterday we had 30 mils so this lake behind me here has uh, filled up at a rapid rate it was probably I don't know a quarter full uh, at least less uh, the other day so it's filled up really quickly um, but yeah hopefully we don't get too much more rain otherwise we might be underwater but uh, yeah really nice little caravan park it's got uh, two pools it's got an adult pool and a kind of kids or everyone else pool uh, a really nice little gazebo thing which I'll show you here uh, and really good little facilities there which is handy uh, the loos are all ensuite and they're really they're quite good actually the loos they're quite nice and modern um, so it's just a really nice spot and where we are at the moment we're actually because obviously we've got Archie with us we're in the, we're actually in the dog designated section which most caravan parks give you you know a shoddy little spot at the back of the caravan park somewhere it's uneven There's, the facilities are like 20 minutes walk away and uh, but here we've actually got the best spot in the park um, I can't believe this is the dog designated area so really happy with that uh, oh and all the sites as well have fire pits at the back here only the ones that back onto the lake have fire pits so we scored our own little fire pit here so that's really cool we haven't used it yet because we don't have any firewood and uh, yeah there's not really any places to get any firewood unless I'm going to pay for it which I don't really want to do so we'll see how we go um, but yeah lovely little caravan park 
as I said, it's $42 a night, which, yeah, not too bad. Easy setup. Uh, the only, I suppose the only con is there's no TV reception. However, this is one of the few parks that I've been in in over a year that has um, an antenna cord as part of the setup. So each spot in the caravan park has its own little antenna cord and you just take it out and chuck it into your external caravan point, which I'll show, I'll come, I'll show you. Um, but yeah, so many places we've been to don't have this and uh, which is really odd, more places should have it. So if you see here, this is our, this is the caravan park's uh, antenna and uh, We've just got it going in the kitchen and it plugs into the TV directly. Otherwise, we could also plug it into this over here. Well, we don't have that little connection, the little antenna connection to connect it into there. So we've just put it directly into the TV. Um, so it's pretty simple. The only other thing is the internet's pretty shoddy out here, which is a bit strange because all our phones say we're on 4G, but we've barely got any internet out here. So uploading videos for you guys has been a little bit of a challenge this week um but we'll get there in the end but yeah this uh really lovely little caravan park and the reviews on wiki camps are really good we're going to leave a review as well because it is spot on just having a look at the wildlife out there on the lake which is lovely and yeah it's pretty hot this afternoon so i think uh I think I'm going to get my togs on and go for a swim in the lagoon down at Yapoon. We've wandered down to the Yapoon foreshore and it is busy. We hadn't taken into account the fact that it's school holidays. So the lagoon here at the foreshore, which is beautiful, is absolutely jam-packed with small kids. Um, we were going to go for a dip this afternoon, but um, I think we're going to leave it and pop back first thing in the morning to maybe sort of catch it when the sun will have risen already because it's super early. Um, but you know, maybe a time when it's just a bit more mellow, shall we say. back at the Yapoon Lagoon and um, it's 6 30 a.m. which is pretty early for us but obviously not for all of these Queenslanders all already swimming and um, some early risers here the sun's already pretty high in the sky we've just left Archie sleeping and we're going to have an early morning dip it is a lot quieter than it was yesterday afternoon so this is this is a bit more our style We've just arrived at the caravan park here in Rockhampton and we've unhitched and everything and coming to the caravan... Uh oh! So we still, we do try and make sure we close all the cupboards before we set off but occasionally if one just doesn't quite click on um, we get that. So obviously the cupboard under the kitchen sink hasn't wasn't shut properly so we're going to have to do a bit of a tidy up um hey hannah come look at this <laughs> what what is it do you see this <laughs> i'm not sure i want to know <laughs> yeah we have the usual uh aussie england um What's the word? Rivalry when any kind of sport is on, where it's Australia versus England. So, uh, yeah, it's not looking Come good. On, for, it's not looking good for England at the moment. So we'll uh, have to see what happens. Watching the cricket was a little bit too much for me. So I've left Chris to it, 
jumped in the car and headed on up here to the Capricorn Caves. I had a great drive up, had Whitney Houston playing, singing my heart out. Um, I don't get a chance to do that when Chris is in the car. So, um, so yeah, so we've just got here. Um, I really like caves, probably more than Chris does, so he was quite happy just leaving me to it. And uh, yeah, so I've booked to do the 3 p.m. Cathedral Cave tour. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to checking that out. I don't really know much about it. I will let you know afterwards. That was so much fun. The tour guide Phil was incredible and I was the only person on the tour. So I got to ask all of the questions, all of the geeky questions about rocks and things that I had and, um, and yeah, learned loads about the caves. So, oh, I think Chris missed out there. And uh, the suspension bridge was pretty cool too. Uh, the only watch out is there are a lot of mosquitoes. Um, walking up because you have to sort of walk through the rainforest a bit and I sillily didn't bring any uh, Bushmen with me so that's a note if you do go to Capricorn Caves remember to spray up with mosquito repellent but apart from that I mean for I think it cost $33 uh, and I felt that was really good value welcome to Rockhampton yeah here we are in Rocky as the locals call it of course yeah <laughs> So Rockhampton's one of the oldest cities in uh, Queensland. Yeah, and uh, it's known as the beef capital of Australia. So there's there's actually over two million cattle around. I think it's about two thousand square kilometres of Rocky. Wow. So that's a lot of cows around. And uh, if uh, you divide that by the amount of people in Rocky, that means every single person that lives in Rocky gets 25 of their own cows. <laughs> I love it. How awesome is that? I love it. 24 cows per person. 25 cows per person. 25 cows per person. Yeah, so, Brilliant. Yeah, so if you're lucky to live here, you should you should really be uh, owning 25 cows. But yeah, we're here for a night. We're going to check out the town. There's lots of old heritage buildings here, like the one behind us, which is called Customs House. It's really stunning, stunning uh, building. Yeah, so um, Rockhampton, basically sort of came about in the mid 1800s and um, the original custom house was built I think it was 1862 or in the 1860s but that was a wooden frame one and then mm. it got replaced with the current building which was built in 1901 and so still still a pretty old building yeah and these old buildings are dotted around the uh, the town of Rockhampton there's loads around especially on the waterfront here, which is where obviously the town originally uh, started from. So yeah, I think we'll have a cruise around and see see how many we can pick out. Yeah, yeah, so we might also have a quick wander down. So we're right on the riverfront now. So this is the Fitzroy River. Yep. Um, or I think it's called Tunumba. Ooh, I don't or know. Or something, um, which is its indigenous name. Yeah. By the Darumbal. Uh, people. Oh, well done. I know, I know. Well so, um, so yeah, we might have a quick look at the river and also appreciate some of the Christmas decorations. So we're, 
we're now in early December, so yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a few Christmas decorations springing up around the place. I noticed that Santa's letterbox is behind us. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. Very exciting. All right, let's go check out Rocky. Okay. So while we're in Rockhampton, we thought we'd check out the Rockhampton Zoo. And the best thing about the Rockhampton Zoo, it's free. How good is that? A free zoo. I've never been to a zoo that's free. Um, so they obviously offer it as part of the botanical gardens here in Rockhampton. And uh, yeah, we're here. There's a meerkat behind me. I'm really excited. Let's go check it out. That's a little annoying, isn't it? Yeah, so far we've passed the aviary, which is closed, and the chimpanzee enclosure, which is closed. The only thing we've seen so far are meerkats, which was cool. So one other thing to do while we're here in Rockhampton is we've come up to Mount Archer Lookout for sunset and there's a little circuit walk with an elevated kind of walkway slash boardwalk. So from here we should be able to get some amazing views across Rockhampton and uh, Fitzroy River as well and just walking through to get to the circuit I can already see the views are absolutely stunning. Oh and one other thing we forgot. So while we were back at the caravan earlier we uh, threw on the news and because uh, we went to the zoo earlier obviously and we said why is the gorilla enclosure all boarded up because of the new baby. It was actually born last night, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, the baby was born last night and literally uh, we went today to check it out. So um, yeah, fair enough, it's all boarded up for a little bit of privacy for the gorillas. But uh, anyway, never mind, maybe next time we can check them out. But. Uh, yeah, let's uh, keep walking through Mount Archer to this lookout. And the sun sets on another week. Yeah, it's been a really chilled out week this week. So, you know, started in Yapoon, which is a beautiful spot. Um, did a bit of island hopping there, a bit of snorkeling, laying on the beach, a mm -hmm. uh, bit of swimming, loved Yapoon. Uh, and we end the week here in Gladstone, which is, uh, yeah, a cool little spot. Not a huge amount to do, but, you know, it's just nice to have a really chilled out week. Yeah, we've done some nice lookouts and mm. it's always nice being near the coast as well. Um, the weather's been a little bit mixed at some times, but that just adds to the fun. Overall, it's been a great week. Yeah, it has been a really good week. And uh, I think it's, like I said, it's been a pretty chill week because we've got a lot coming up in the next few weeks, a busy few weeks, which we're mm. really excited about. So uh, this is a little bit of the calm before the storm when we start getting really busy again. But yeah, but an area that neither of us knew at all. So mm. great to just get to know the area. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think, would I come back to any of these places? Yapoon, absolutely, I'd come back. Yapoon was a beautiful little spot uh, and you could easily spend two weeks there. It's such a nice little spot. Uh, yeah. Rockhampton, I wish I had more time there to explore Rockhampton. We didn't have too long there. Uh, and Gladstone, not yeah, not a lot to do here, but a nice little town. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for joining us again. Please don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Yeah, we've got a few more months of our trip to go yet, so make sure you follow along with us 
well into the new year and we'll have more content after that as well. So looking forward to a big 2022. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a comment and obviously give us a, give us a thumbs up as well uh, before you go. That would be great. Absolutely. See you later. See you guys.